My favorite all-time Black Knight, uh, the one from Scooby-Doo. Right in the round tables. What's up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking the brand new six-episode miniseries called Black Knight on the platform. We're going to get into it right now. In 2071, where people depend on respirator masks to breathe, only 1% of the human race has survived, and a strict social stratification has been established in the deserted lands of the Korean Peninsula. Delivery drivers play a crucial role within this system, and for refugees, becoming a delivery driver is their only hope for survival. This was an exciting South Korean series that follows our main two characters, the legendary delivery driver 58, and this refugee who sees this legend is in awe by this legend and wants to follow his footsteps, but there is a plot underway to try and climb to the top of the pyramid, or in this case, go to the bottom of the pyramid because the rich live underground. Above that, you have the in-between, and on the top level, the refugees who are fighting for survival. So, obviously, there's a social commentary at play here. I think of a Netflix movie like The Platform, very different circumstances here, but uh, similar themes, which is always nice. You have people in this show, they're wearing face masks, they're fighting for air, kind of like in Spaceballs, except they're not selling it. And this is a crazy world, man. Only 1% of the population is left after an asteroid hit. So some really cool lore there, and we'll slowly get some sequences that describe this lore, and one sequence in particular that just kind of tells you, hey, here's where we're at, here's our main characters. But the concept of the delivery driver is really cool. It's such a simple title for a massive piece of this television show, and the ongoing theme of these six episodes is push back against the rich, against those who want to constrict us. The main villainous presence wants to bring everyone underground to live as one, and if that happens, well, it's not going to be good news for those who aren't rich. The show goes on! I really like the idea of what the villain stands for, but when you look at the villainous character on his surface, he is a bit more conventional than I wanted him to be. I wanted us to dive in, and we kind of understand where he's coming from, and I somewhat get his motives. Get a lot of dialogue trying to describe those motives. I just don't know if they were described good enough. I don't know if this show does a good enough job of making that villainous presence as threatening as they want it to be, and that main character that we also follow along. There are a lot of characters at play here, and because of that, we're exploring so many elements of backstory, and one backstory in particular that I do wish we could have gotten more from, just in a different way. What? One of our, I would say, two main characters, he is very mysterious. There is a legend surrounding him, and everything we see him do is pretty badass. I was in awe during some of these sequences, and since it has that post-apocalyptic, and everyone and their grandma is going to say this Mad Max vibe... Mediocre that you mostly get from the first episode, uh, but it somewhat maintains through the rest of the series, it establishes him as this really intense presence. That being said, I wanted to know how certain things came about, and we get to know a lot about the person, but I wanted to know a lot about the legend, and I'm not sure if the show was able to provide that, so some of the things that he's doing here, it was interesting, but I didn't buy it as much as the series wanted me to. And then on the other side, you have this more fun, aspiring delivery driver who, like I said, is in awe by this legendary figure, and uh, that's where some of the flashbacks come into play as well. I like the fact that both characters are on such opposite ends of the spectrum. You have one who is very intense and dark, and the other one who is more fun-loving. Circumstantially, it's a hard thing to do in the apocalypse, if you will, but uh, he's doing it, and he's having fun. I'm doing so you have lots of political intrigue here, also sci-fi action, that post-apocalyptic Mad Max style feel. I mentioned post-apocalyptic at numerous times in this review. You're probably getting sick of me. But I also want to throw in The Hunger Games. It has that style here where those in charge, they feel like they can just manipulate and control everyone below them. There's only a handful of movies, Hollywood movies, that have done a very similar thing. I do think this handles certain moments very interestingly. And then in other moments, there's a lot of drone shots, a lot of CGI that doesn't quite look up to par. I don't know if Netflix put the budget forth that it needed to for this. And it's crazy because I saw that they were investing a lot of money into South Korean content. And in some of these action sequences, they just look kind of cheap. Now, they're still entertaining, and I had a good time with them, but I do wish some of the special effects were a bit better. 
and less drone shots. I'm not sure if those work, but this is also based on a webtoon, which could explain why certain characters are cartoonish, certain conversations are cartoonish. A lot of exposition here. I mean, the first episode alone, we'll go into a room with a bunch of people, and they're just kind of describing where we're at with the story, uh, telling us instead of showing us, and I much prefer when a series shows us and doesn't just try to give you everything immediately. I don't give everything. Before I give you my score, did you have fun with Black Knight? Is this the show you're binging on Netflix this weekend? Stay tuned, we have a brand new review for Hypnotic coming tomorrow, but first, here is my score. Black Knight has a cartoonish feel that occasionally undermines its message, but this post-apocalyptic madness will provide fans an easy binge with just six episodes. So, an easy binge. Maybe I wanted a bit more from the story because there is a lot there. Uh, but it was entertaining and I had fun with it. I'm curious to see what you think about Black Knight and this crazy world that I didn't even know existed. So I can't wait to see uh, the next South Korean series. I always have a pretty good time uh, with them on Netflix. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon if you come back, maybe.